Joining me now, New York Congressman Lee Zeldin. Congressman Zeldin, good to see you. I mean, this to me was beyond the beyond. It shows you how low they'll really go. Your thoughts? Yeah, it was so low, and this was something that you were seeing play out with regards to other answers to other questions uh, over the course of the entire hearing. She, was, she came in totally biased, completely unhinged. I mean, you've heard the word triggered a lot, and it's the, the source of uh, Don Jr.'s book that became number one New York Times bestseller list. This is what's played out uh, since the election of Donald Trump, and this woman was clearly uh, and is just totally unhinged by the election of Donald Trump and still hasn't gotten over it. She w was, in one respect, maybe a, a perfect witness uh, for the Democrats to bring in because she was going to tell them whatever they wanted to hear about how the president, based on her theories of constitutional law, absolutely must be impeached. Uh, but unfortunately, it was just so obvious that there's a lot of hate uh, that she had, that the Harvard Law Press professor had as well. Uh, and you, know, you saw it, like, for example, when they asked him if it was uh, okay, does it matter that the aid was released anyway and Ukraine didn't have to do any new investigations, and then you get your answer of, no, that doesn't matter. But all of a sudden, the other 97% of the facts just don't matter. They're, no, because they have a narrative, the right? Only, I mean, they, they've got their, yeah. they've, they, they've solved the equation. He needs to be impeached. Yeah, they, so now they just have to figure out how. And, and you've got all this conjecture and all this bias that's leading everything. It's, it's incredible, Congressman, because let's not forget, you're talking about undoing the will of 63 million American voters. People went and they voted for him. Seems to me before you want to change all that, you want to actually have your facts line up. Yeah, and you should actually, so it was just yesterday that Adam Schiff presents his report. So the next day, you're going to have this first Judiciary Committee hearing. Schiff still hasn't provided the underlying evidence to support his report. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're having these three people come as your witnesses, uh, and you have these four professors answering these questions, oftentimes being asked to weigh in on facts, to, just to focus in on Schiff's version, Schiff's fairy tale, that 3% of the story connecting dots, not actually connected, relying on presumptions and guesses and hearsay. The first witness that should be coming before us in the Judiciary Committee today should have been Adam Schiff. That's why you had Ken Starr as the independent counsel for the Clinton impeachment come, present his report in person, put his money where his mouth is, raise his hand, take an oath, answer questions from Republicans, Democrats, and President Clinton's attorney. What should have happened today is that you're bringing the report, the facts, before the Judiciary mm -hmm. Committee, and someone's able to answer questions, including from President Trump's attorney, but instead you had these three hyper-partisan, hugely biased, and to the, to the point, as you're opening up with, to try to take down uh, the, the, the the president's young teenage son to insult him to try to yeah. score a cheap I don't get blow. It. I mean, by it the way, I, I thought people learned their lesson with Chelsea Clinton, that children were off limits. You didn't see people going after the Obama's children, rightly so. I mean, because again, kids, oh, kids, kids don't yeah, it, deserve, it, deserve that. It, I mean, and it's completely unnecessary wrong. They can't defend themselves. They're kids, for goodness sakes. And for her oh, to it's, do it's that worse. on national it, television. The, Hunter Biden is off limits. This is a... <laughs> and he's